On June 24, 1947, a private pilot named Kenneth Arnold had an aerial encounter that defied all explanation. As he passed by the Cascade Mountains on a flight through Washington State, Arnold spotted a group of large, delta-shaped objects flying around the mountain peaks in a reverse wedge formation. He reported that each of the objects seemed to bounce through the air like a saucer skipping across water, a comparison that inspired the media term flying saucer. It wasn't the first anomalous aerial sighting in human history. It wasn't even the first in 1947. But it was the first to make national news, and it introduced the world to the concept of the UFO. Arnold drew up a very detailed report of his encounter that contained a wealth of information about the capabilities of the observed UFOs. Because the objects passed in front of some mountain peaks and disappeared behind others, Arnold was able to make a fairly accurate estimate of their relative distance. On the basis of this estimate, he calculated that the objects were between 45 and 50 feet long, and that they were traveling nearly 1,700 miles per hour at the time of the sightings. On account of his extensive flying experience and his familiarity with the region, Arnold's calculations were considered to be reliable by aviation authorities. The report was taken seriously. Unfortunately, none of the proposed causes, either man-made or natural, could account for all the maneuvers that Arnold reported. No bird on the planet was big enough to be visible from the distance Arnold spotted the objects, and no bird, jet, or airplane could have even approached the estimated speed of 1,700 miles per hour. For lack of a better explanation, the Air Force attributed Arnold's sighting to a particularly vivid mirage, but to many, including Arnold himself, it remained unexplained. After this point, any attempt to dampen the intrigue of the UFO phenomenon with mundane explanations proved less than effective. The extensive media exposure that Arnold's sighting enjoyed had instilled the concept of the flying saucer as a permanent fixture in the public imagination. Even after Air Force investigator Edward Ruppelt introduced the more scientific descriptor of unidentified flying object, the image of the skipping saucer lingered on. More concretely, Arnold's report encouraged others to go public with their own experiences. This began only days after Arnold's story broke, when several third-party witnesses came forward with stories that corroborated his initial sighting. In the following weeks, flying saucers were showing up across the United States. Unsatisfied with the Air Force's work, Arnold began personal investigations into a number of these sightings, becoming one of the first independent ufologists in modern history. What's more, Arnold's case prompted the Air Force to redirect some resources to help resolve the UFO question. In 1952, they created Project Blue Book, a group that took responsibility for collecting and investigating UFO sightings until its closure in January 1970. Reports spilled into Blue Book offices on a weekly basis for the duration of its existence, and every year, a few new unexplained cases were added to the archive. While the Air Force has long since gotten out of the business of studying UFOs, the question of the origin of these mysterious objects remains unanswered. Private organizations have emerged in countries around the world to carry on the task of documenting anomalous sightings, and together they've amassed an enormous volume of extremely compelling cases. The remainder of the videos in this series will explore some of the most outstanding sightings in the UFO archives, beginning with a dramatic encounter in the airspace over the U.S. capital city.